Alright YouTube, welcome back to the channel. So hopefully it's the final sort of uh, install on this dyno build. So the last one you see me doing the final assembly, this and the other way, all the welding was done and I was absolutely at the wit's end because like everything I did seemed to just go wrong. But let's have a look what I've done so far then. So fully assembled now. Um, I've got the control box mounted up on the wall. I've done all the cable routing. Um, this is going to get boarded up at some point because I've got the electrician come around to sort out my own house at wiring. I had a full rewire, but this needs tidying up with um, all containments. So I'm not boarding this up just yet, but I put all the cable in and tapped it all nice and neat. Got it grounded to the domestic uh, pipe work as well. So it's good ground that is. Uh, I've got the cable installed for the hall sensor for the trigger wheel. So that's all sorted. Looks like brake lines all done. It's, uh, yeah, it's ready to go. So I made a nice little table there to put the uh, laptop on. Just, uh, Got power to it there. Yeah, it's uh, that's pretty much ready to go. So what I've got to do now is basically start trying to calibrate it and see if I can get some numbers from it. So I thought, well, how am I going to do this on the other dyno? I spent forever and a day trying to get the right values to get the reading as accurate as I could. So I reached out to um, another company called uh, Procar Engineering, uh, run by a chap called Jeff, who's he's since day one I got into karting. He's been an absolute diamond. He's He's built me engines in the past. He's done loads of work for me. I've bought loads of parts from him. He's just spot on. He knows I've been building this dyno project. And I just said, listen, mate, is there any chance you've got an engine lying around that's got a graph with it that I can use to sort of calibrate mine? Just not run, a, run a power run, do a power run, and I can adjust my settings to get the same sort of figure as him because I know his dyno's bang on the money. Within two days, that rocked up. You know what I mean? Didn't even charge me post. He just said, uh, yeah, I can sort you out one. Sort, sort your engine out. So, um, yeah, he's given me a 160 engine with a graph. So let's have a look at this. So yeah, it's so got a nice power graph there. Just over, just over nine horsepower. So I can use this, I can get this engine now installed on the dyno, do a power run, and I can just adjust the figures on the, the inertia calculation to get as close to this as possible. I'll probably dial it back a little bit, um, just because I like to have my dyno under reading if you like um just to stop people say if someone says oh your your engine's not 18 horsepower and i can say it is mate it's actually probably more it just yeah that's just where i like to run my dyno so need to get us out of the box get some uh, chassis mounts on it and get it on the dyno and then we can uh, get the laptop out and see what we're doing so let's get on with that Right, so that's the engine all filled with fluids. Uh, I've just got it on the engine dyno now, all tensioned down. I've installed the bully clutch, the twin plate clutch, got the chain on, fuel lines all rigged up. Uh, I've not bothered to install the uh, the throttle cable linkage because this is set up for a nibby car uh, with the end of it. Whereas there's a different setup on these carburetors, but I can still use the hand lever just to do a power, to do a, a decent power pull. So I've got the uh, laptop plugged in now. That's all set up there. So what I'm going to do is I'll have you recording this screen, sorry, which I'll have the, uh, basically gonna fire, this, fire the, the software up. I've got to change a few settings to, like for, for one instance, the flywheel before had 99 teeth on it, whereas my new trigger wheel's only got 36. 
So I've got to change a few parameters like that. I've got to change the diameter of the flywheel because that's gone from, I think, 356 mil to six to 500 mil. Just a few little changes like that. And then, um, yeah, I'll record what I'm doing to the software and hopefully we'll be ready to get it fired up and do a power run. So let's get the software fired up. Right, so I had a bit of to and froing with this dyno now. A few settings were wrong, so I was getting the wrong ratios. Um, so I had a little chat to sports devices, and they've given me, well, they, they took control of the laptop, changed a few things, and it's now playing ball. So I've got my two screens set up. That one's just displaying the graph, which I'll, I'll record that. And this will be control one here, which has got the engine RPM, calculated RPM, roller RPM, lambda, which isn't connected up, by the way, and two temperature gauges here for air intake and exhaust gas temperatures. Again, these aren't connected yet. The main thing is to get these two married up and start producing power. So I'm not going to be over revving these, but I know Jeff at Procar, he had dyno these at um, 9.19 horsepower, brake horsepower, and uh, torque was 11.51. So that's what I'm trying to achieve now with um, with this power reading. So I'm going to fire the engine up again. I'll have that one recording. And I'll also have a camera on this so you can see what the dials are doing. And we should have a figure close to what Jeff's got. So I'm just going to put the camera on here. Uh, see if I can get it on the screen. So let's fire the engine up. Right, so finally, and I mean finally, we have a result. So, do the power run as you're seeing. Uh, look at the big screen here. More than happy with what we've got. I've just changed the value of the temperature to 25 degrees, which is what the, uh, the temperature is in uh, in the garage. On Jeff's uh, temperature, he had it as 15 degrees. So you can see there's a bit of a compensation going on here. But I've got 11.6 torque, 9.1 horsepower, he had 9.19 horsepower and 11.5 torque. So these these are bang on. You know, I've, this is as close to him as I'm going to get, and the graphs look identical. Um, it's got all the information I wanted. The roller speed at 5,500 RPM is at 13.8. So that is well within the parameters of this flywheel. So again, that's safe. I mean, on my engine, I'll be revving that to around about 8,500 RPM, which is still it'll be, still be well underneath um, the envelope of what the uh, the flywheel's rated to. <sighs> but honest to God, it, by the power of editing, you have not seen the pain I've gone through to create this dyno. On paper, it should be simple. It's just a wheel that is spinning uh, by an engine on a chassis with a brake. That's it. My God, I've, had it. I've been to hell and back with this thing. But the chassis is all done. I'm going to put a, a panel across here with a cutout for the handbrake and um, a button sort of here to start the dyno runs. Um, but yeah, everything else is just spot on. Like a little bit of paint needs touching up where I've ground stuff back and scratched it and what have you. But that's why I brush the paint on because I can always touch it up now and you'll never know. But in terms of homemade dynos go, I'm, I'm over the moon with it. It's super safe, super sturdy, um, and it's very quiet. But yeah, that's uh, that's my attempt at a homemade dyno. So the next job is is to get the Gucci engines built for the go kart and hopefully get them done sharpy so we can get out with my son and my mates because I've missed it. But this is something I've I'm just so glad I boxed it off. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.